Hello viewers. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the physics behind pumping a skateboard. Pumping either a skateboard or a longboard is a means of locomotion in which you accelerate yourself in the net forward direction, but you never pick your feet up off the board. So just by shifting your weight around, you can actually propel yourself. And when I first did it, it seemed like I was performing the impossible based on the elementary physics I knew at the time. But I'm going to detail how, by exploiting some clever usage of physics, you can, uh, you can do this thing yourself. So first, let's, uh, let's discuss some basic forms of locomotion, and, uh, specifically linear locomotion, uh, which lays the foundation for why I thought that this was so spectacular. So a car uh, is the simplest, and that has the luxury of just being attached to the planet. And the planet represents kind of a, an infinite reservoir for momentum. So if you want to move your, your car forward, you just simply grab onto the planet and you move the planet backward. And that's because momentum is conserved. And so in order to get something moving in one direction, you have to have something else moving in the other direction. Now, it doesn't seem like the planet is moving, but that's just because its mass is so huge that it's, the change in its velocity is insignificant. Now, an airplane has, uh, does not have the luxury of a planet that it's attached to. So it's got to figure out some other way of moving forward. And it does so by attaching a propeller on in the front, which essentially, or the back, which essentially is a, uh, um, a fan. And as we know, fans smack into the particles of air and, uh, and fling them backward. And in so doing, the plane gets shot forward. Now, a rocket is the uh, third example, and this is the most challenging. And that's because it doesn't have a medium of air that it's immersed in to, to be able to grab onto, or it doesn't have the earth to be able to grab onto. It can't grab onto anything. It's in the depths of space. And so what it has to do is use the mass that's on board. And so by creating the combustion reactions, which then get funneled through this nozzle, uh, they can uh, send all these little particles uh, with extremely high velocity backward. And if we add up the sum of all of their mass times their velocity uh, in this direction, then it would equal the mass times the velocity of the rocket ship in this direction. And so if we draw a big boundary around this whole system, its center of mass never actually changes or accelerates, but, uh, but you can get the rocket to accelerate by taking the mass on board and accelerating in the opposite direction. So if we go to a skateboard, um, imagine if we stand here. Um, and here, where our feet are, and our, our center of mass is about near our belly button. And if we pass that center of mass backward, then the skateboard will move forward. But as soon as our center of mass passes over the leading edge of our foot, then we fall over. And so we really can't gain much with this method of locomotion. It is highly ineffective. Um, but in physics, we have, uh, we have angular corollaries to everything that we're introduced to linearly. And so the corollary to momentum is easy. It's angular momentum. And rotation, uh, mass becomes rotational inertia. And velocity becomes angular velocity. Rotational inertia is mass times the distance to the center of rotation squared. And this right here is where we have something to work with. Because we can't really change our mass, and we're trying to change our velocity. We don't have much to work with there, but we can change is how our mass is distributed, which is what our rotational inertia is telling us. And so let's look at a skateboarder in a half pipe. He has three straight segments in this geometry of the half pipe, and then two curvy segments here. And I'm drawing these circles so that I can represent the radius of curvature of that segment, of both of those segments. And so if we then, uh, if our skateboarder it's bends his knees up at the top of the, the skateboard ramp, uh, the half pipe, and then uh, comes down to this curvy section with knees bent, uh, while he's in that curvy section, he can extend his knees. And in so doing, his center of mass moves toward the radius of curvature. So if I go to more towards uh, something with a more representative scale, uh, that would be like his center of mass moving here to here. Um, so it's moving toward the center uh, of curvature. And what that means is that the distance to the center of curvature, what I uh, highlighted down here, is getting smaller. So if my rotational inertia, which is proportional to that value, is getting smaller, then the only way that I can conserve my angular momentum, and which is to say keep it zero, is by increasing my angular velocity. 
and my angular velocity equals my actual velocity divided by that uh, radius of curvature. So because these two are proportional, by increasing my angular velocity, I increase my actual velocity. And so bam, I have increased my actual velocity. I have accelerated myself. Uh, so what I do is I bend my knees here, I extend my knees here, I bend my knees here, I extend my knees here, I bend my knees here, and then I come back down and I do the same thing. I bend, I extend my knees here, bend my knees here, etc. And the whole time at every one of these uh, uh, curvy sections, I'm feeding energy into my into my skateboard me system, and I'm. Uh, or rather, I'm converting the chemical potential energy in my muscles into kinetic energy, which we'll see at the end of the talk how that exactly works. But uh, what I really want to show you is how all of this can then be used to actually move yourself straight and propel yourself when you're on flat land. So when you don't have a half pipe, you no longer have these curvy sections, but we can still do it. And that's because the skateboard wheels um, are attached to the trucks, and the way the trucks are designed is that if I put my weight here, um, let's see, if I put my weight here, then that causes these wheels to bend inward, and in so doing, that makes my path curvy. Um, that can make my path curvy, and if I put my weight on the other side, then it would curve the other way. And the net effect is uh, if I just alternate between those, I can uh, I can create a sinusoidal path. I can create this this curvy path here, and if I <coughs> am at these uh, these segments here that are straight, so we see that we have in the same way similar to before we have um, these curvy sections where I can represent with these circles to show us the radius of curvature, and then I have these uh, these straight segments uh, which I'm showing you very very small straight segments in. Uh, in blue. So during that brief straight segment, I can bend my knees. And then when I get to a curvy section, say where the, in the pink here, uh, I can st I start to lean into the turn. And that's because the centrifugal force is trying to push me over. And so I lean into it in order to balance the centrifugal force with my force of gravity. And uh, but, in so but while I'm doing that, I have my knees, I already had my knees bent from before. So then I can extend my knees, and uh, that causes my center of mass to also move in this direction. And now there's a component of that in this direction. And so now I'm moving my center of mass in the same direction that I was leaning. And now remember, I was leaning into the turn, so that means I'm moving my center of mass into, uh, toward my radius of curvature, uh, toward my center of curvature. And then I can do something similar. On, uh, on this side. So if the purple segment, now I switch directions, so now I'm leaning the, the opposite direction, and so then I'm going to be uh, extending my body again, which then extends my center of mass again toward the center of curvature. And so similar, very similar to the half pipe, I can, uh, by just bending my knees and straightening my knees, I can create, I can feed energy into the system. Uh, again, by that I mean convert chemical potential energy of my muscles into uh, kinetic energy um, of my skateboard me system. So um, the, another way to look at this is with uh, an energy, energetic approach, and that's uh, work equals uh, force times distance, and work is the change in kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is, um, is equal to the... Um, one half uh, mvn times the change in velocity squared. So by doing work on the system, I'm increasing my velocity. And now to understand how, uh, which force I'm pushing against, that's the, again, the, in, my, in my frame of reference, that would be the centrifugal force, which is mass times my velocity squared divided by the radius of curvature. And so by, t by taking a tighter turn at a higher speed, then that force will be greater. And the, large, the more I'm able to extend with my knees, the greater the distance. And so the greater that force distance product, the greater the work, and therefore the greater my change in velocity. Um, the last thing I'll say is that this is how you can use your knees, but you can also use your arms and your torso, but that's unfortunately for another talk. Thank you for listening.